quite easy. And the Raspberry Pis came along, and we started to build the radio on that. And then um, our, our desire has always been to make it very easy for people to use our technology. And so what we thought was the best thing we could do is build the kit with all the bits in it that you can go from basically from zero to hero, yeah. right? And build something very simple and build something quite complicated but, or quite functional, but it's still simple, easy enough for you to be able to do it. Yeah. So that was where we came from. So what do we do? It's a wireless kit. You see a lot of wires around here, but don't worry about it. They're here mostly to provide power to the various things. So there's a laptop and there's two cables here that provide power. One to the Arduino board here and another one to the Raspberry Pi. So, what's in the kit? So, here's, the kit comes like this. There's 88 parts have something in it, I think. Key thing that's in it, I think from the Raspberry Pi point of view, is a radio that fits on the GPIO port of your Raspberry Pi. Okay, you, you plug that in, and you then, by doing a few bits and pieces in the operating system, essentially you make sure that you can access the serial port you can send serial data out over the radio. That's number one. What voltage rate do you use for that? Um, I think they're set to 9600, but they can run up to 115 kV. Oh, okay, yeah. right. So you, you go as high as you like. Yeah. Well, as high as you need to. Yeah, yeah as high as you yeah. The other end is an Arduino. Arduino Uno. I know it's a bit of a competitor to the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, but never mind. The Arduino Uno uh, is a very sort of popular board. A lot of people know how to work with that. We put some software on here, basically, so you need not worry about it too much. But it's a standard Arduino Uno, with the same pinout and everything else. But one of the things we've done is we put a radio, our radio, on the board here. It's the only board that is a wireless Arduino ready <coughs> board, as it were. So that you get as well. What port have you used for those? That's just a standard serial port connections, or we used different. This again connects to the serial port, correct. Okay. And then what you get is uh, an SD card with essentially an operating system, uh, uh, RPI operating system, Wheezy, that's been configured to run with the radio and work with all of the stuff that we've got. It also has uh, on it documentation of what we're going to be doing, all your projects, and it's got software on it, which I'll show you, I'll run through in a minute, to show you what that software is. But basically that's the software that helps you go through your projects. Okay. Is there any problem with configuring, adding that to a standard distribution? No, there isn't, there is a oh. long, longish, List, uh, list description of what it is, what steps you need to yeah. go to, to do your own, do that for your own yeah. uh, own system as well. It's not hard, but it's just you need to be yeah. yourself, methodical about it, you know. You yeah. use just thing. checking because I probably want to. <coughs> um, so that's not that's not a, that's not a difficult thing to yeah. do at all. Um, uh, the only other thing that only it goes as far as actually installing the Arduino yeah. IDE also on the Raspberry Pi and being able to program the Arduino also from the ra Raspberry Pi. Right. So it's something that you know, is a little bit may, a step yeah. further, but I mean, we won't go into that. Right now. Right. And then the other thing that we've got is a bunch of components, LEDs, resistors, cables, wire, wires, um, and also uh, a USB cable. Yeah. So that's all in the kit. Not all of that, that's all this thing is in the kit. So the, the, um, the USB cable isn't here and the SD card isn't here. But if you want to just pass this around and have a look, then you can get a feel for what it is and touch it and, and all the rest of it as we go along. Right, so, so what I've done is I've got my um, Raspberry Pi here with the slice of, oops, slice of radio on it and the SD card inserted. And then the other thing that I've done for that one specifically is that I'm running um, a, a, a LAN here just basically so I can VNC, you know, do a remote desktop effectively on that so I can use that to display. So what you see there is this. So what you see on the screen there, that's basically the Raspberry Pi as it boots up um, with our card on it. Okay. And now I'm going to sit down for a minute and show you what goes on. So one thing that you, you'll see um, is that here on the left hand side top, you'll see a folder called Wick Files, and that's where the programs are that we use. So if I, if I open that, then you'll see um, in here the the Python stuff I've downloaded, documentation is in there, all the software that runs on the Arduino is in there, um, and all another little pro program called RunMe. So that's what you start, execute that little program, and that's basically the, the shell, if you like, that launches all of the uh, applications that we use. So there's two sets of applications, and 
One of the things that's happened is when I started this, if this uh, this um, Pi is connected to your wireless ne to your to your network, yeah, and then basically what it will do is we'll go and find whether this is the latest version of the software. If it's not, it'll download it and update everything. So we keep developing it, and you get the latest version every time. Okay, so that's really how it works. Um, so if I, <coughs> I go to the basics tab and I launch that, then basically I get the introduction to the kit and, the, and the, you know and, and in, an intro to the project. So what you get is you get this application here. I'll roll it up so you can see the whole thing. One of the things I need to do is I need to connect the Raspberry Pi to the serial port because the radio is there, but it doesn't. It's not connected as such. This application is not connected to it yet. Now this um, is typically the, the TTY AMA zero. That's typically the port that comes up. It's already configured standard, so all we need to do really is to press the connect button and. Now what is happening is that when the Raspberry Pi addresses that port, it will get sent over the radio. So, um, let's go and look at the basics tab. So in the basics tab, I see a picture of the Arduino on the far end. And here, essentially you can control, read or write, if you like, any of the pins in the Arduino. So, um, you know, here are the analog inputs you can read. On the red ones there on the left hand side, the top side there are the digital, on the right hand side are all the digital inputs and outputs on that board. So, one of the things that I can do, <coughs> let me see if I can show you that, uh, there is one port, one LED on here, the D13, that's already, <coughs> you know, that's, that's this one here at the top there. If I click that, 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 that comes on. Okay. If I go off, we'll do it up again. Uh, you know, so that's basic, very basic, obviously. So the first project to show you that we have a radio connection and everything works. So that's project one done. Right, so it's kind of you know, straightforward, isn't it? But that's basically the, the start of it. So then there are uh, a range of projects that will take you from there to do slightly more complicated things. Uh, so one thing, just quickly for this demonstration, what I've done is I put um, a small circuit on this little board here. It also comes with the kit, by the way, this little board. And so this consists of one resistor and a thermistor, so, uh, you know, a temperature variable uh, transistor, uh, sorry, uh, resistor. And a couple of wires basically to go into, into a knot. So effectively, what happens is that temperature goes up, and you know, that voltage on that thing goes up and down, and then you can, you can measure it. So what we could do is we could say, OK, well, let's read what the input is on there. And it comes back and it says 468. It's not like a nice number, but it doesn't tell me very much about the temperature, does it? <coughs> but um, <coughs> under here, I don't know if you've seen that as well, underneath here, you get little messages coming along. It tells you what messages have been sent and what has been received. And red is sent, sent is in red, received is in, in blue. And here, you see the actual messages that go over the network, right, that go over between these two. So for instance, what we did was we said a D13 high. We said put D13 high. Remember when we pressed that button in here? Uh, and then it comes back and says, yes, it's high. Okay? And then low, yeah, comes back to say low. And when we did A00 read, it read that one, and it came back to 468. So you can actually see what goes on over the over the that's actually the serial communication that goes on. Right. Now <coughs> In the advanced analog tab, um, we have a, um, you know, a, a, a way of turning that number that we just saw, that 468 that came in, into an actual temperature. Right, so if I do this again, if I press read, it comes up and says 20.98 centigrade in the, in the room here. Yeah? So, <coughs> so that's, um, if I was doing another project where I was doing um, measuring the light level, for instance, it would come up with that same voltage, you come up with 45% of maximum light. You know, it's, so we put it all on one page. But, okay, and there are um, projects that you can do with LEDs as well. Switch them on and off. Um, you can make LEDs go, you know, zoom up and down. And, you know, there's like a few projects like that, but just to give you an idea about how, well, <coughs> how all that works. Um, okay, so let's let's go out of here and let's go to the graphs project because that's also quite interesting. 
Um, so graphs, if we launch the graphs project, then essentially we have only one thing in here at the moment, but um, for the temperature. Again, we need to connect up the pump port. Let's do that. And then we go temperature graph. And you know, what this little program does is it allows you to read the temperature there and do that a number of times. And in this particular example, it says delay every delay every uh, thousand milliseconds, it's one second, every second it goes and reads the temperature and does it twenty times. If you do that, press the go button, there it goes. And uh, if I touch it and warm it up a little bit, temperature go? Mm -hmm. It works. So, you know, yeah? If you want to make such an application um, from, say, writing, writing yourself, is there any sort of tutorial that gives you the yeah. information okay. to do that? So, uh, say you, you want to make your other skills or <coughs> something that is not included. Yes, I'll come, I'll come to that. So, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll show you. so th these are sort of the set first 17 odd projects. They're all sort of hardware ish projects. The next 10 projects are all software projects. Right. So they talk to you, they tell you more about the software that we use for getting these messages in and out, for doing, tells you how we do the temperature conversion, how we do all those things in Python. All right. The Python project programs are all published, so you know what they are, you can look at them, you can fiddle with them, change them if you like. Um, the last project that is in there actually goes and measures the temperature like we've done here, but rather than just putting it in this graph, it sends it off to the internet somewhere, stores it up there so you can read it from your phone or from wherever. Okay? So it's quite a complicated project in a way, but we explain all the steps, <coughs> we give you all of the software. And if you want to take that software and adopt it and adapt it and change it for your own you know, wants, that's exactly what you, what you want it to be doing. All right? The idea is to get you from zero to hero. The set, so <laughs> in that sort of way. Yes. Is there any support for uh, C or other languages in Python? No, it's uh, uh, like the examples are all in Python. It's all in Python. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you just say you just write into the serial code. So there's no yeah, yeah, so be any, anything that writes to the serial code, I guess it works. Yeah. Right. You could do it in C, I'm sure. Yeah. The, you can, yes, of course you can. I mean, you've got the, you've got the, 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 the Raspberry Pi end and the remote end, Arduino end. Can you actually have many Arduino ends if you don't connect them at the same time? So <coughs> you can connect, disconnect, connect to others. Yes, you can. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a question of addressing. If you yeah. looked at, um, oh, it's just still visible. Um, so the, the little A here is the first character in the message. Yeah. The two dashes are the address, effectively, on this particular se 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 section. So, you know, if you change those, if you make that AA or AX or RB or whatever it is, you know, that then it communicates to another node. Can they be at the same the time, or they have to be one and then disconnect and connect? They can. Yeah. No, there are there are no there's no connect disconnect going on at all. Right. So that's that's all sense. Yeah. So, 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 so yeah. the mechanism to connect to the radio is automatic, because it doesn't like connected to a Wi-Fi network, for example. Or, or no. 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 Okay. No, 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 no. No. So all the messages that are sent on the network are received generally. Yeah. Uh, on the same pan ID and the same. You know, encryption, which all the radios are yeah. set. Okay. Standard, but they come out of out of, from us. So what happens well, if you go listen to each other? It's the software on top that actually fills it out and listens. Okay. So what happens if you go out of range, for example? What's the indication that oops, you know, you're a bit too far away? Don't know because it's just... right. I mean, what happens is that you send the message and you don't get a response. Okay. So, oh, right. Well, lack of feedback is uh, it's too far away. We'll try right. it again. Yeah. Okay. So we don't give any guarantees about message arrival or not. That's there's no. You know, right. Is it a UDP transmission type of? Mechanism? You could think of it that way. Right? Yeah. It isn't UDP, yeah. but yeah. Same kind it's just basic serial, isn't it, across there? Yeah. 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 There's no guarantee it gets there. So I've right. got some ideas on one way. It's a radio. What yes. is the range? Expected. What sort of range are you? Uh, well, it depends a lot on the on the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, it's generally it's better than Wi-Fi. It is. A lot right. better than Wi-Fi. All oh, right. Okay. So because it's a lower frequency, it's eight six eight megahertz, not two point four gigahertz. It goes further. It goes through more walls, generally speaking. Um, but if you have a house with modern walls and you know foil <laughs> on the inside and everything else, yeah, you forget. Yeah, anything. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I can't give any guarantees, but we've had yeah. people doing kilometers more. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> That's we've good. Had people struggling with thirty meters as well. So. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want it, the 
uh, Arduino in. If yeah. you want more of those, they come from you or they just are standard ones? Uh, well, we, you can buy those Arduino boards separately, independently. Yeah, you can buy oh, radio oh. enabled. And, and add yeah, your radio, radio yeah. to it, yeah. in fact. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, we sell those separately. Yeah, and we sell them in the small uh, form factor as well. If you come to the stand, I'll show oh. you. We've got a sort of like a Zigbee shaped version of that as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably more useful actually, because all the modules that used to, or adapter kits, that used to have the Zigbee unit yeah. in it. Pop well, that's what I was really just trying to get a feel, because I might want to do something, yeah. got some sorts, and yes. yeah. want to have yeah. the option of the remote end. Yes. Yeah, I was going to show you a little bit about the documentation that comes with it. So the documentation okay. is actually on the, it's SD. Actually on the stick. Um, I noticed this one says this document is still under construction, which is not quite true, but this is one on the website, it's updated by now. Oh, right. right. So, but we also have it on the web, so yeah. you can actually go to our website as well and get it from there. Um, so you what, four or five minutes left. Yeah, so what happens there is that each project, essentially, you get, um, a visit, you get you know, a statement about what you will learn, how long it will take, what you need for it. Yep. Um, you get a, quite a lot of pictures and so forth about how you connect everything together. Um, for some projects, and I'll roll up a little bit further and off. Some other projects, you get um, a diagram that shows, you know, a um, fixing diagram like that. Then you get a real picture of how it shows. <coughs> you get a description of, you know, what you should be doing and what you can be expecting. And so the instructions are quite detailed. Yeah. Um, you may not need it, but you know, you know it's there if you want it. Um, and so it's basically set up, first of all, introduction, then understanding of digital inputs and outputs, then all, uh, analog inputs and outputs, and then it goes into all the software, including the real world, world examples of logging stuff up on the net. So, um, yeah, I've probably run out of time, so if you have any other questions, then you'll yeah. come on the stand. And, you know, obviously, this was uh, one of the Texas Instruments radios you're using there, yes, yeah? correct. right? And uh, you can, in theory, obviously, go into it and look at all the registers and all that business, right? Do you still allow that, or do you provide any support for that, no. or have you completely and utterly removed? Have you actually consciously removed it? I know you obviously in these examples, it's not really relevant because you're trying to go from a simple level to send a serial spit stream across. But even in the even in the radios that we normally ship. Um, we don't generally allow access. Although, you know, there is a um, there is a command set basically that you can use in order to change the frequency and the you know the board rates and you know the radio characteristics okay. and there's like a lot of command commands that you, you can give. Yeah, the reason we're concerned you can say it's in range was it in signal in, in range or not, because obviously they don't normally have a look at so RSSS or whatever, the signal basically the Yeah, we can yeah. do tests of that as well. Yeah. You can set the modules in that mode so that you can basically report the uh, strength of signal that comes through. Yeah, that, all of that is available. Right? There's <coughs> reference documentation on the website for that. So you can hit a mysterious command. But you're asking for something really complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a simple question. How much does it cost? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, 40, $49.99 and £45 pounds on the stand here today. Good <laughs> yeah. answer. Yeah. 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 If you had two Raspberry Pis, you wouldn't be able to listen to the radio traffic. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's just serial. So, yeah, you know, I can sit there type in a on a monitor. You know, in a in a window, I can type on one and it comes out on the other. Yeah. I don't have to even use these messages. You know, I mean, can send anything that I want. Yeah, you should. I've had a few. Yeah, I mean, this kit has been set up to for these stylized messages. Yeah. But if you want to send something else, you're free to do that too. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. How fast is the signal? Transfer. Well, um, the signal transfer over the air is 250 megabits per second, quite fast. But the speed in the serial port goes up to 115 kbps. Yes. It's quite fast. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to type that quickly. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just for control. Yeah. But you know, um, you can you can transfer you know quite a lot, quite a lot of data. I mean, you're transfer transferring uh, what's it? Um, uh, photo, photo data <laughs> through this. Well, yeah. Slowly, yeah. but it goes through. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you.